Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about a major breakthrough in modern warfare. For the very first time, a US B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber has successfully sunk a ship during a test, using a brand new weapon called QuickSync. This is not just another bomb test, this could completely change how naval battles are fought in the future, so what is QuickSync? Why use a stealth bomber against ships? And how does this reshape the balance of power in the oceans? Let's break it all down. On September 3, 2025, over the Norwegian Sea, a US B-2 Spirit stealth bomber carried out a high-stakes mission. The target was a mock ship at sea. The weapon was QuickSync, a modified version of the JDAM bomb designed specifically to destroy moving ships. This test was not done alone. The B-2 worked together with four Norwegian F-35 fighter jets and a US P-8A Poseidon Maritime Patrol aircraft. This was the first time such a joint operation took place, combining stealth, surveillance, and precision strike into one mission. So, what makes QuickSync so special? Normally anti-ship missions rely on expensive cruise missiles like the Harpoon or El Razm, but QuickSync is a much cheaper solution. At its core, it is a standard JDAM bomb, but with a new maritime seeker head. This seeker allows the bomb to track and home in on moving ships. In this test, the B-2 carried both 2,000-pound GBU-31 bombs and 500-pound GBU-38 bombs, proving that different sizes of QuickSync can be deployed depending on the mission. Essentially, it turns a regular smart bomb into a ship killer. Here's how the operation unfolded. The P-8 Poseidon first scouted the area and identified the target ship. This data was then relayed to the B-2 bomber. Meanwhile, the Norwegian F-35S provided escort and electronic surveillance, ensuring the skies were safe. The B-2, flying stealthily and nearly invisible to radar, approached the target zone. Then, it released the quicksink bomb, which guided itself precisely onto the moving ship. The result? The target was destroyed, proving that even a stealth bomber can now function as an anti-ship strike platform. So, why is this test such a big deal? Traditionally, sinking a ship requires expensive long-range missiles or torpedoes, but QuickSync is a low-cost alternative that can be dropped from multiple aircraft. Combined with the stealth of the B-2, it means ships can be attacked without warning. Think about it. A B-2 can fly thousands of kilometers undetected, get close to enemy waters, and drop bombs that sink ships, all at a fraction of the cost of traditional weapons. This makes it harder for countries like China or Russia to feel secure about their naval fleets, even far from U.S. shores. This test also shows us how warfare is changing. It's no longer just about one branch of the military, it's about integration. In this mission, the Air Force, Navy and Allied forces like Norway work together. Surveillance from the P-8, stealth strike from the B-2, and support from the F-35S created a complete ecosystem. This kind of joint, multi-domain warfare is the future. It allows militaries to operate faster, more flexibly, and with greater precision. And it shows how allies are preparing for possible conflicts in contested regions like the Arctic or the Pacific. Of course, there are some limitations. QuickSync does not have the long range of advanced cruise missiles. It relies on aircraft getting relatively close to the target, which is only possible because the B-2 is stealthy. Against heavily defended fleets with strong air defenses, this might still be risky, but against lightly defended ships, supply vessels, or in surprise attacks, QuickSync could be a game changer. It allows militaries to save their expensive missiles for bigger targets. So to sum it up, the B-2's QuickSync test is more than just a technical experiment. It's a glimpse into the future of naval warfare, where stealth bombers can sink ships, Allies operate seamlessly together, and affordable weapons create entirely new strategies. The oceans are no longer safe for large fleets, and this test shows that the next naval war could be fought not just by ships and submarines, but also by bombers high in the sky. What do you think? Is this the future of warfare or just a niche solution? Let me know in the comments below.